That's right. We're on the ground here on Pontchartrain Drive, and we have a salon owner, Miss Alicia. I can't thank you enough for talking to me. You have been through so much. This is your salon. I mean, we can show. I. What do you? What? How are you doing right now? I know this is tough. N uh, not good. I'm trying to stay positive. It's, I'm still in. I'm still in shock. Actually, I'm still in shock. In disbelief that this happened, and it happened very fast. I was just sitting at home thinking about other improvements that I still wanted to do and still have to complete. And now I'm, I'm back at the drawing board with this one. Um, but my stylist called and said that the shop is completely gone. They were actually here with customers. And you have quite the story. Show me what's in your hand. You were able to salvage. Oh, yeah, when I first walked in, my umbrella, my grandfather's umbrella. <laughs> you are related to someone very special in New Orleans. We can kind of pan down and show all of our viewers if you can kind of bring it down a little bit. Talk about your grandfather is Fats Domino. Yes, yes, that's my grandfather. Kind of bring it down so we can show. What did you think? What made you spring into action to grab this? The rain. <laughs> the rain, and it just—it's just one of those valuable things that I had, you know, that I hold on to as far as a memory and a memorabilia. And I normally keep it with me, but it was in my cab station. And I kept wanting to bring it home, wanting to bring it home. And so when I came in, I saw everything on the floor, everything damaged. And it was the first thing that spotted me because of the color, the beautiful colors in it. But once I saw that, I said, oh, let me get my grandfather's umbrella. That's the first thing I wanted to grab. I was like, let me get the umbrella. <laughs> but I grabbed the umbrella and was just walking around to see what else I can salvage. But it's the first would be, do you think he was guiding you through this, that, that moment? I'm sure. I'm what sure. would be his message? Or you... If he had a message, what do you think it would be in that moment? Or to everyone right now that's rebuilding? Just stay strong. Stay strong, stay positive, and continue to keep walking to New Orleans. <laughs> One. <laughs> You've got such a spirit about you. I mean, this umbrella, It's if you can kind of show our viewers it real quick to make sure everyone can kind of see how special this is. I mean, it's there's always so much devastation, but you've got such a positive spirit. Um, I know you said you you did not have insurance, unfortunately. No, unfortunately not. Mm -mm -mm. And what's next for you over the next 24, 48 hours or hour? I know you're taking it minute by minute. Try to salvage whatever I can. Um, some styling chairs are still intact. Some of the things are completely damaged. Um, some of the coverage that I did have, I don't think it's going to cover none of my personal things, none of the personal belongings. It was more so more like the liability, but not personal items. So that's why I'm trying to salvage as much as the personal things that I can. But um, just trying to stay prayed up and pray for miracles at this point. <laughs> no, my most important thing is trying to find another location so we can start getting back into working to not have my workers out of commission for so long. And that was one of your workers was here when it all happened? Let's see if she can come in and talk to us real quick if she's able to. Um, so there's a lot of people out here that went through this devastation. Ma'am, we're live on, on WDSU right now. Tell me, uh, I can't thank you all enough for talking to us. What, describe, you were here for it all, right? Yes, sir. Walk me through what you went through and what we're looking at behind us. Okay, um, well, what happened was I was stationed in front, that, this is my vehicle. I was stationed right there when the... Uh, well, we can call that. Yeah. She'll, she'll be able to show us. So kind of just walk me through again, ma'am. Okay. All right. So I was be careful. I was stationed right here, and uh, so I'm kind of pictured this like I'm kind of facing this away. So I just was, and all this was glass. So I'm kind of just looking at all the stuff that's going outside. What's going on outside? The trees, everything was swaying, like it was just swaying. Um, and you could see bits and pieces of debris flying, but it wasn't nothing big and major, like trash, pretty much, and the wind. So uh, we watching the trees and stuff like that, and then um, the power went out. Once my, my co-worker come in, the power went out, and, you know, we're trying to figure out, like, we about to just either end it or what. So then the um, building got the uh, rattling. Well, anyway, like the siding on the outside, on that side, it started rattling, and it just got it got quicker. Like, it picked up the speed, and so we was like, oh, y'all, I don't feel safe right here. My co-worker was like, y'all don't feel safe right here, y'all. Let's make, start making a way to the back because back there is more, you know, there's more space, uh, smaller spaces. So we put, when we walked in, well, we went to the door through this door right here. The stuff started falling. 
like it was falling, started like it was. We just just dove for cover in fetal position. Once we got in fetal position, it was like we was all on just top of each other, and the uh, um, the wall came down, like the wall kind of came down on top of us. So when we just waited until everything was clear, everybody started moving and just getting up off and just moving around. And then when we look around, it was just all the windows was bust out and the, everything was just everywhere. Did at any point in time you think you're not going to make it out of this alive? Oh um, well, I know it was more of I was just scared that more of the debris was going to be on top of me than I thought. Like, you know, but it wasn't it wasn't as bad cuz you know, it was I mean, it, all the windows were blown yeah. out, so that had to be pretty terrifying. Yeah. That was I think if we was up in this part here, yeah, it might have been more, but where we made it to is like kind of a, a hall. What did it what did it sound like in that moment? I know so much was going on. It, it the wind was more of a high a high pitched whistle, but to hear the glass crackling, I didn't even hear none of that. I just saw stuff falling and I was just ducking and trying to run and like just making way to get out the way. So I just, when, we dove, when we dove down and got in fetal position and just... Whew. Been through a lot. Were your ears popping in that moment at all? or I don't even remember. <laughs> I just wanted to get out the way. I you had you had clients with you? Yeah, we had clients, yes. How are they doing? Are they okay? Yeah, everybody okay. That's their vehicles out there. So we okay. That's this mine right here, the black um, Yukon right here. That's my coworker one right here, the white one, and that's my client, the brown one. So, but we okay. We were able to manage it, um, get out. Um, it had to be it, emotional. Yeah, it's very, it's very just to get, you know, emotional or whatever. But the rain and the water, so we did go stand over there to stay out of the be dry or whatever. So, <sighs> well, I'm glad you're okay. Thank you so much. I yeah. can't thank you enough us and sharing your story thank you we're gonna be back all right so again like you just heard they're gonna be back this salon has been through a lot they haven't opened that long but like you just heard they're gonna be back part two there you go part two they're gonna come back so again a lot of devastation but incredible to see the spirit and energy of slidell despite so much devastation guys back to you yeah aubrey something so